kind of bookmarked to read later about the climate and things and you know how that goes. <laughs> so the articles, the articles. <laughs> that can be depressing, you. I guess. Yeah. yeah. I had a very wonderful, I had a delightful meeting with uh, um, Commissioner Prezia today. That was really, really nice. Um, about an hour. Actually, we hit the end of the end of the meeting, and and she she was she was late to her next meeting because she'd forgotten we were having a, such a, a a hot discussion. It was really very very good. Over um, we were talking about the uh, uh, the ordinance and good things about it and problems that we both saw. You know, in terms of actually getting something, you know, in. Oh, good. But uh, I'm I'm dealing with each one of the commissioners uh, separately now because. I think they got misinformation or, you know, really they were busy on some other things and just really didn't give, you know, a, uh, did, they didn't send it to a hearing basically. And that's what needs to happen. So the public can comment on, on it. And so that's kind of what, what I asked for and uh, we'll see whether we get it or not. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that, that sounds like a kind of smart way to handle it, to kind of yeah. talk to them each individually and, and kind of see what their concerns are and kind of, See if you can get on the same page. Yeah. I and I, I told I told Anna that uh, you know, given her position, you know, this, this is this is a true statement. It's just kind of strange if you think about it. Given her position, I might take the approach that they're taking too. You know, but you know, obviously, I'm not in that position, so I can I can afford to take a different approach. Right. But uh, you know, because she's got the job, and it's her it's her job to to you know, watch how the you know the money is spent. And uh, while I'm also, you know, nervous about that at the same time, um, the, the other thing was she was saying there are two issues on there. She was saying that, you know, that they, the county is looking at, uh, you know, um, having to sue the Swanee River Water Management District over the MFLs. And of course, that's something that we put them up to in a way. I mean, you know, we, we suggested that, well, we suggested it the first time the MFL came up five, six years ago. And then, you know, when it came up uh, again, um, and it was late and all that we we sent them a resolution that in, in effectively suggested that if need be they take you know take them to court to, to keep it down you know because they were going to or to keep the MFLs you know set to the level they were at because they were probably going to say it was okay which is exactly what the, the district tried to do so um, but uh, I, you know I don't know how much success they'll have after having watched the the uh, the Nestle's um, uh, uh, debacle you know. But uh, anyway, so we'll see what happens on that. I'm just um, kind of compiling um, a tally of who um, picked what as their top choices. Um, oh, you've got a nice whiteboard back there. That's pretty good. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Where did just... that come from? I like that. You know, when you can move around, it was kind of it's small enough to, you know, to take up half the room. Yeah, um, my housemate just got it from their coworker. Um, he uh, was, okay. I guess, moving or something, and he asked her if she wanted it. Uh, so. so you don't, you don't, no way of knowing where it came from then. Mm -mm. But yeah, it was. I, I love whiteboards, so we were all excited. <laughs> yeah, really, really. I've got a small one, but you know, mine is like you know, like yay big, you know. And it can, you know. Yeah, yeah. There's something about them, like you know, different, Not at all. different places or different like formats kind of inspire different things you know like there's something about like writing something you know journaling by hand that's a little different than like you know keeping a, a journal on your keep like on your computer um you just come up with different ideas or you express yourself a little differently and I feel like it's the same thing with a whiteboard you know somehow it makes certain problems that you're tackling easier to kind of work out on a whiteboard you might need to move that board though I just, I'm drooling on my keyboard and it's getting you know <laughs> it's getting wet and it might not continue to work <laughs> Oh, that's funny. Okay. Um, so I don't, I don't, I'm imagining that nobody else is coming, but you know, if they show up, then, then we'll, that'll be uh, just, that'll be good. Um, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, uh, so George, we got your five and we got your five as well, David, is that right? Yeah. Okay. And then um, I just had emailed you, Mark, like at six o'clock with mine. Um, uh, so you can you can maybe forward those to everyone, um, but um, just compiling the feedback that um, we've received from everybody so far. Oh wait, I didn't uh, do George, the other George yet. He had some as well. So let me put these 
in. Um, let's see, he wants two, three, five, seven, eight. I confess the method I used to choose the ones that I selected were, they were the ones that I thought were, were of most interest rather than necessarily you know, the most important things to deal with, so. Yeah, I kind of did the same thing. I did kind of a, um, a compromise between the two, you know, like what seems important and what actually seems, you know, kind of interesting enough to, to draw a crowd and there's, you know, yeah. There, there's a lot of, of presentations and things on, on these subjects. I mean, there couldn't be enough, but um, you know, it, it's, it's kind of worth considering that too, like what's gonna entertain people or, or get them to come and, and watch. Something else, that, and we've, we've done it before to some degree at least that we may want to consider and that's to, to uh, uh, you know, work in collaboration with another group that's, that's doing some things, you know, and maybe that's another thing we can do. Mm -hmm. So, um, by the way, and I also, to that end, I also sent uh, a, a link to my um, climate reality group. That was um, Bob Tanzik's group. Um, uh, there's, they're you know, having some trainings you know, over the next few months. And so I, I put a link to that out there. You can look at the link. It describes what the training is and, and it's free. Yeah, I actually, I went to their, I think if we're talking about the same thing, the first meeting that they had on it and mm -hmm. there, is it, it, they're like um, basically trying to build like small cohorts of people to learn about a particular representative in our um, local or state government and and maybe and develop a relationship or rapport with them so that they can kind of have some influence over them when it comes to making votes on environmental issues something along those lines was what I got from from their project which okay. I mean that seems like a, a pretty uh, good idea you know, sure. To, Sure, absolutely. I mean, at least you've got a chance to, to be heard by that representative, you know, when the time comes. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so thanks for passing that along. I mean, I think that it, 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 you know, my reservation when I went to that initial meeting was it sounded like something that you'd be potentially signing yourself up for a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, the, the, so that was kind of my like, uh, you know, reservation about kind of getting more involved. It felt like something that you could quickly you know, have a, you know, plate of work um, to, to yeah. handle and be responsible for. But I mean, the project itself just seems really important. And um, so, yeah, thanks for passing that along. Yeah, work. I, I just did a, I, I'm, I'm taking a, a conservation science course, um, you know, from, with the, uh, it's, uh, we call it the Florida Master Naturalist, you know, uh, certification thing. And you know, one of the one of the assignments we had to do, I just I just spent like, you know, I was up all night the night before last. I mean, it was just all night long. It took me that and plus time in the day before or the day after just to put that with the, you know, that report together. So it's not it's 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 a lot of work, you know, getting involved in some you know learning new things. So um yeah, I know what you mean. <laughs> it's, you don't want to get involved in some programs because it may just be a whole lot of work. But you know, if you can choose, yeah. if, you, if you ahead of time decide you want to learn something, and it's that that's a whole different thing than than getting involved and then saying, "Oh my goodness, this is just way more." Yeah, and and paradoxically, you know, it's like the more kind of personally invested, the more you care about it, the kind of more overwhelming it seems because you know that you're not gonna, you know, you're not gonna put it down. Um, yeah. So yeah. Hi, Bruce. Hi. Hi, we're just getting started. Um, so we received feedback from um, a good number of people about their top five choices. Yeah. Um, did, did you receive that list, Bruce? I've seen so many lists. <laughs> that is enough for several years. Oh. <laughs> okay. Um, well, um, so just just from compiling what we have so far, um, it looks like the most so let me go ahead and, and re read all of the um, topics that we have been considering just to, to review for everyone. And then I'll let everybody know what um, the kind of most popular choices um, are so far. And I guess um, we'll be, um, since Bruce, you're the only one who, um, he, who's present who hasn't um, given their um, feedback. So um, the, the 10 topics that we were considering, number one, how big slash far reaching is the climate change problem? Um, and that would be like an introduction to climate change. Number two, the cost of action uh, versus inaction or the cost of action and inaction. 
Uh, number three, a day in your carbon footprint, where we um, kind of look at people with different lifestyles um, and look at their carbon food carbon footprint in terms of food, travel, um, li um, living, and, and so on. Um, and then number four, an economist perspective on climate change, um, where we explore what carbon trading is and what would it mean for our daily life. Number five was agriculture and climate change. Um, and um, this one, we said it could be more than one conversation. Um, and then some subtopics under that heading was um, invite uh, Robert Strickland, a cattle farmer, and uh, Lynette Greiner, um, who's an attorney and tree farmer, and Jack Payne, uh, and or Jack Payne, who's the vice president of IFAS, to talk about their perspectives and the role of Florida agriculture in combating climate change. Um, and Strickland and Greiner are both co-chairs of the Florida Climate Change Initiative. Um, so they've definitely been working um, right around the, the center of, of all of these things. <clears throat> um, the other subtopic or, or um, I guess other idea for a conversation with agriculture and climate change um, was to invite the director of the Florida Climate Institute to speak about the impacts of a changing climate on Florida agriculture and maybe other topics. Um, and then number six uh, for a climate, or climate change conversation was local efforts in climate change. Number seven was climate change and our oceans, um, and specifically speaking about ocean acidification. Number eight was what does the planet look like in the future, so in like 2050 or 2100. Um, number nine was climate change and permafrost um, and the release of methane gas when the tundra is thawed. And um, Number 10 was human overpopulation and the carrying capacity of the planet and how to bring the population down. Oh, hi, hi George. Hi, Misha. I, I, I made a modification on mine, if you noticed, um, to number nine, where it says release of methane gas. I added methane gas and uh, uh, mercury. And mercury, okay. Yeah, and that was critical because, you know, that gets in the air and then comes down here to, to again, it gets in the Everglades, it gets in the water. And that particular form of mercury, it seems, um, you know, is modified by the, the, you know, microorganisms, you know, and it, it makes it a very, very highly uh, bio-usable, bio-available uh, factor to it. And, um, and so, you know, it, it moves up in the food chain very, very rapidly. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's definitely an important um, thing to note. Um, so, um, yeah, so, so just to go over kind of what the most popular topics are, um, and then, um, wh what I'm imagining is, um, we don't necessarily, I mean, we can, we can kind of have a tentative idea of the topics that we'll explore for, you know, maybe this year's climate conversations, um, but, you know, as you know, after our first one, we might have more information, we might want to switch it up. So, you know, I wouldn't say that we're necessarily deciding on exactly what conversations we're going to have, but maybe if we could at least um, get a rough sense of, of what we want to do, um, or a tentative schedule, and then um, maybe nail down the first one, and then just start working on that. Um, and then with respect to that, um, I think it would make sense uh, you know, if we have our, um, our first conversation in, you know, nailed down um, to then kind of think of who we can invite to the next big meeting um, that could be a potential speaker. And, and so we can start, um, you know, make forming, forming the conversation in a, in a more coherent way. Can I ask a question? Yeah. Um, what overall direction or emotional approach do we want to take? Do we want to go into alarm? That was my kind of email. Or do we want, in other words, with the facts, the grim facts to, okay, wake up, shake your, you know, get some, get real. Uh, this is what we're going to be facing. Or do we want to take a, a more a calmer approach and give them a light, succinct overview of the first um, community conversation and then uh, tell them that the details of each, so you could do bullet points in a, in a brief overview with a little fleshed out detail wherever, you know, whatever. And then with subsequent conversations get into the weeds if necessary. 
what, what is the general opinion about that, you know, those approaches? So, so I, I kind of um, lost the reception in the beginning, but are, are you saying, um, do we want to kind of um, shake people, you know, shake people up about the urgency or do we want to approach it in a more, in a, yeah, in a softer it, way? Is, right, urgency versus, um, this is an overview. And I mean, I like the idea of the agriculture bit. That's a positive spin, but uh, do we first have to basically shake them at their core and shock them into, you know, awareness? I don't know. Yeah, I mean, my, my sense is we do a little of, of both. I respond. Yeah, go ahead. If, if someone is, is awake, so to speak, okay, they're, they're, you know, they're even capable of hearing the message at all. I think just, you know, going through and, and, and you know, giving them an, an, an organized, uh, you know, view of the facts of what's happening, you know, in any given area ought to be enough to shock someone, okay? I mean, it, you know, it doesn't take a special attempt to do it. You could be doing everything in a really low key and, and, and calm way. And, you know, the people who understand what you're saying are gonna be, you know, shocked. Yeah. Did, did anyone, was there any way of assessing who were our viewers in the last forums and who we might expect to get? So if we get people who are not familiar with science in any way and are science skeptics, where we have to sort of, do we want to sort of target who we anticipate our audience is? I mean, that seems to be a, a reasonable thing. I don't know if we can figure them out though. I feel like um, me personally, um, targeting the skeptics um, is, is kind of a wasted effort. Um, because they, they just tend to be trolls at those things. Like yeah. they, they don't really want to hear it. Um, you know, they're not there to like, oh, let me see if, if you can convince me. They're more just there to heckle and stuff. So yeah. I, I feel like we, we want to appeal to the people who, um, you know, are concerned, but maybe not concerned enough or are concerned, but feel like they don't really have a clear enough understanding or, you know, that, that kind of thing. That makes sense. They're, 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 they're basically thinking the same way, but they don't realize just how bad it is yet. Yeah, yeah, or yeah. yeah. I agree, with, I agree with Nisha that um, I, I think the skeptics, um, I'm not even sure they would even be interested in showing up. Um, yeah. But um, I do think generally speaking, just from 30,000 feet that um, we probably need to make sure that these presentations have some take home lessons and some practical things that people can do so they feel like, so they feel less like they're just lost in the, in the whole, um, you know, stew pot of, of issues and problems that they can actually go home with one or two things that they can, they can try to implement on their own. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. Um, so let me um, real quick just go over um, the most popular um, I, uh, topics that we've had. Um, and then Bruce, if you want to weigh in with your choices, um, like I said, of, of everybody here, you're the only one who didn't submit um, yet your, your top choices. So you're welcome to do that at, at any time. Um, <laughs> But uh, let me let me go ahead and, and tell you what we're where we're at right now. So um, the um, cost of action and inaction um, that stands at five votes. Um, the day in your carbon footprint stands at four votes. Um, the economist perspective on climate change stands at three. The uh, agriculture and climate change stands at uh, five votes. The local efforts in climate change stands at four. Um, climate change and our ocean stands at three. What does the planet look like in the future in 2050, 2100 stands at five votes. And then the, um, the last two stand at one vote each. <laughs> so the most popular um, so far are um, the cost of inaction versus action. Um, the agriculture and climate change, and what does the planet look like in the future are all the most popular choices right now. Um, I don't know how we feel about 
um, you know, running with one of those, or if anybody wants to kind of um, make their case for a specific. What, what are they again? Are the three, the three that uh, have all fives or, or the four? Uh, there's three that have five votes. And those are the cost of action versus inaction. Right. Um, the agriculture and climate change. Okay. Um, and the, what does our planet look like in the future? In 2050 and 2100. Okay. Gotcha. Gotcha. Great. Um, and I think, you know, um, for me, I mean, I, I, I think um, any of those would be good. I think um, the kind of more important thing, but then picking, you know, the best of those three or something is, um, you know, just getting, getting the right person to, to be um, speaking about. I like the one of, of the cost of action versus inaction. I like that one very much. Okay, so I'll put you as a vote for that one. I came across an interesting- You're the deciding quote. factor, Bruce. <laughs> <laughs> I came across an interesting quote when I was looking up conversations on climate and someone said, and it's very simple, uh, when it comes to people who are climate deniers, that someone should say to them, what evidence would change your mind? That gives them an, a chance to actually say something, mm. and if they and if they don't, then you know they're beyond hope. But it right. may be an, it may be an opener to get a conversation going with some people. Yeah, yeah, that's a good, um, and it forces them to kind of reflect and see if they're just being, you know, if they have walls up or if they're actually open to yeah. change. Yeah. Um. Okay, so I mean, with Bruce's vote, um, cost of action and inaction is the top choice. Um, and, you know, um, if we want to go with that one, we can always, you know, slate the other ones for subsequent conversations. I think if I was going to pick my top, top choice, it would be the agriculture one. I mean, I'm still kind of hoping we get to do that. Um, but I, I, like I voted for cost of action and action as well. I think that's a good one, so. Um. The nice thing about that is that you can make portions of that broad with broad brush strokes where yeah. you, can, that you can zoom in and out however you want. Mm -hmm. uh, and it doesn't have literally the, the, the expense but the consequences yeah. of yeah. inaction. Yeah. So you can you can bring in bits of anything you want, really. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's a, it's a, in a way it kind of touches that introduction to climate change in, in a more specific way, in a more tangible way, I guess. Um, so um, yeah, do we? Um, so so I think uh, for the purposes of this meeting, um, if we want to go ahead and move forward with that topic. Um, the, the next step would be to kind of think about who would be um, a good panelist. Sorry, which one are you saying first? Um, well, so, so Bruce, um, Bruce tipped the scales. And so the cost of action versus inaction is our top choice. Okay. Why would, why would somebody look at me and say I tipped the scales? <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, I mean, um, does anybody have any, any thoughts that way of who would, would make sense for a panel like that? It, I mean, it seems like a kind of a broad, a broad subject, right? So we'd want maybe somebody who, well, actually the parentheses here says speaker from climate reality. Um, and that, that actually makes a lot of sense, right? We want somebody who, um, kind of knows the issue in broad strokes and also is like versed in the numbers of, you know, what happens, um, you know, down the road. And, and I think, yeah, somebody from the Climate Reality Project is kind of rehearsed in speaking to exactly this, this topic, cost of inaction versus action. Um, so maybe we want to reach out to somebody from, from that and-, um, and We all know someone. We all know, yeah, Bob, <laughs> he was the last uh, host of the yeah. panel. But he'd be on the panel this time, so. 
Yeah, I mean, Bob was a, he's, he's a good speaker. Oh, he is. He's, and he's, he's good at whatever he does. He's a very relaxed guy and calm and just, you know, good under fire. Yeah, yeah. Just, he has like a good demeanor. He's not, he doesn't get like worked up. <laughs> like me. <laughs> Oh, that was not what, what I was thinking. <laughs> Are you guys talking about Bob Palmer? Uh, Bob Tansing. Oh, Bob Tansing. Oh, right, 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 right. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I mean, he could definitely do it. Um, and then I guess the next question is, you know, we, we had kind of um, debated the idea of making it a, a, a format where it's a smaller um, conver a shorter conversation um, and potentially, you know, just one or two versus like a, a big panel. So, I mean, we could have it just be Bob, you know, kind of doing a, a presentation and then um, opening it up for Q&A or we could try to get somebody else to kind of, um, you know, make it, make it a larger panel. What's everybody's thoughts on that? A 30 minute presentation and, uh, you know, maybe a little an, an opening and closing, you know, a couple minutes in each of that. And then, you know, um, I don't think we need a break with just an hour, but then, you know, 30 to 40 minute presentation and then whatever question and answer period and the rest of the time. So, yeah. And, and yeah, ask Bob about it because if Bob doesn't want to do it himself, he'll, he can give us someone that would do it, I'm sure, you know. Sure, sure. I mean, if it's not, um, if Bob doesn't want to do it, um, I'd like to have his, um, you know, alternate, at least maybe come to a meeting, um, if possible, just so we can kind of get a sense of their, um, you know, their kind of rapport with us and, and, um, and something I, else, I think, I think with, with everyone else's permission on this, um, you know, what I'd like to do is maybe find someone in, um, you know, League of, League of uh, Women Voters and, and Sierra, you know, see if we can't work some, you know, something up together with one or the other or both of the groups, you know, to, you know, kind of co-sponsor. If nothing else, what they'll do is they'll just, they'll be able to get more people, you know, involved and, in, in, you know, uh, you know, direct audience. They'll, they'll, they'll spread it to their, you know, to their groups a lot better if they're a participant in, in the actual planning and everything of it. And Although there's not going to be much planning for us to do, but they'll be, you know, they'll be in, in on at least as a, as a co-sponsor. So, no, I like that idea a lot. Um, like you said, I mean, it, it'll definitely increase the numbers. Um, we could also have it like you know where maybe Bob's presenting, and you know, if somebody from League or you know another organization wants to be part of the Q and A session, mm -hmm. and then you know we'll have more people to potentially offer answers. Um, you know, when it comes to Fielding questions. Provide a moderator too. <laughs> That's a good thing to do. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so David, you'll reach out to Bob and ask him um, yeah. if he is down for being a presenter for our first conversation. I sure will. Uh, okay, great. And then, um, yeah, if you want to get anybody else involved as as co-sponsor, um, you know, it since I. There's no objections, it sounds like, to making it a short format um, and just kind of getting something out there, um, a presentation by Bob and, and then a Q&A session. Um, I like that, it's simple. And then we can you know, just um, get something out there. So um, we were initially, I think, shooting for April. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know if we wanna push that back a little bit um, why, why don't I ask Bob and see how long he thinks it would take for him to put together a presentation like that? If he's good to go in April, I feel like he has a presentation like that. It's just like on his desk. <laughs> it'd be late. It'd be late April, you know, if we did, yeah. or early or early May, one or the other. And we don't want to, you know, go too much longer than that. But. Yeah, I mean, I think I think you know, Bob will probably have something that he can put together pretty fast, and. Um, the, the main thing is just um, giving us enough time to let let the public know about it and, mm -hmm. um, you know, kind of- I think it would be really helpful, especially if we have short presentations so that people don't get tired and they have busy lives at home, et cetera, yeah. to have a good uh, reference reading list so that people can go online and in dribs and drabs, go back to the same paper and read a little and then come back to it so they don't feel 
I've got to read this now. Well, I'm not going to do that. I can't. My life is too busy. But if you can mm -hmm. go back and you know that kind of stuff. I yeah. really like this idea of short, uh, short ones too. I was, I think that was George wasn't uh, Nahak, wasn't that yours, your idea? I think that to do these at like an hour or less, or it was a couple of people who came up with it, but I mean, I wish you one of the ones that, that was. You talking to Hakmuth? I don't yeah, remember. Hakmuth, I'm talking to Hakmuth. <laughs> yeah, I don't remember, David, to be honest. <laughs> I won't take, okay. I won't take, whether it happened, whether I said it or not, I won't take credit for it. Okay, well, I, I, I think someone other than me did it for sure. And and yet now, and it's because it, it took me a couple months to really get warm up to it. But now that now that I've got to the point where I think that's the way to go, it's really, it really is a way to go. I'm, it was a genius idea there. So yeah. we can do a bunch of these at shorter, you know, they'd be much better taken by the public. And I think we're much more, you know, useful to them, you know, in terms of their being able to learn something from it. I think yeah. it would be also, also good if we could find a visual presentation, some sort of a, a short, perhaps documentary or, or cartoon or something that would illustrate uh, what we're talking about, uh, rather than just, I don't know if Bob would do a, a PowerPoint presentation. I hate PowerPoint, uh, but yeah, something that would liven it up a little bit. Graphics are very helpful because you can look at them and glean things over time. You know, with a magnifying lens, you zero in and, and look up terms that you don't know and then you yeah. just flesh everything yeah. out. Yeah. I mean, I, I know that the Climate Reality Project, um, you know, I mean, they, they definitely take that into account. They're, um, they're, they really weigh heavily, you know, making things accessible and and having presentation style that's engaging. So, you know, I I wouldn't I would be surprised if if you know Bob wasn't intending to you know bring out good visuals and stuff. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, we could definitely um, you know ask him about that. Make sure that you know let him know because I agree with you, Bruce. It's um, you know, we, first and foremost, you know, you got to get people to to be kind of moved and, and pay attention and um, having the right visual definitely makes a world of difference. The problem is, is they're, they're, they're time consuming to create and they take, they'll take a creative person to create and they take a, a lot of, uh, in many cases, because of that, it takes some, there's some expense involved in doing that. But um, yeah, I agree. It's nice to have that sort of stuff. But I mean, I, I think that that Climate Reality Project has a lot of that stuff in house. You know that they they make it for because they're a you know a nationwide or a worldwide network, and and they have people presenting this stuff all the time. So they they have a lot of these things just available to members um, to use for presentations. Yeah, yeah I, I think there would be plenty of pictures out there uh, about climate action and climate inaction. What would happen? I, I think there's plenty that can be pulled from. Yeah, yeah. They may um, even have a presentation specifically, you know, on, on that. We'll, we'll just have to see what, what you know, what, what it is. So when we talk to Bob. And... Yeah, keep us posted if, um, you know, on what he says. Um, and then um, if he has like an alternate instead. But I think that, yeah, that makes sense to, to try to get him or, or somebody from Climate Reality Project. And I'm fairly, fairly positive. If he can't do it, he knows someone who can or can find someone who can. Because a lot of these groups, they really want to get the word out. And so, you know, one of the reasons why they're training people and they, the trainers are usually the ones that can come do presentations like this. So, you know, yeah. we'll see what you can get. And I mean, and then that also gives him a chance to, um, you know, if he wants to make mention of that, the, the project that you had just emailed or um, had us uh, had marked forward to us, you know, that the, the Climate Reality Project is working on now, potentially get more people involved in that. Um, okay, so um, so I'm happy with where we're at. I feel like we've picked a topic, um, picked a potential speaker that is my next topic. Um, let's, do, let's always be one or two ahead. So we've always got something, you know. Yeah, okay. Um, uh, so, so after that, um, the uh, next most popular choices were the agriculture and climate change. Um, what does the planet and what does the planet look like in 2050 or 2100? 
I like the, the what does the planet look like in 2050, 2100 as a second one, just because I think before we get to agriculture, which is going to be a little heavier and perhaps take more than just one, um, I'd like to have us off and running so that we maybe have a, a following for these shorter uh, version uh, presentations. Does that okay. sound like a good idea? Yeah. Do we, yeah. Do, we need a, do we need an entire session on number eight, what does the planet look like, or would that be some things that might fall out of what Bob Tanzik talks about? That's true too. Yeah, um, I, yeah I'm, I think- in, act, in action makes 2050 and 2100 look pretty inhospitable, I would, I would think that he would, he would speak to that. We could play this by ear. I think, as far as this goes, we, it'll be like what, what you know, perhaps what what they what you know what he's got in you know already in hand, and you know how long he thinks it'll take to do a presentation on the one and the other, and maybe it's something they can kind of tie together and do in one you know in one shot. But uh, yeah, I, I could see it happening both either way. Like I could see it where he finishes his presentation, the first one. And it's like, you know, we need to have a follow up with something more specific about, you know, what the planet's going to look like. Or it could be, you know, okay, well, he kind of addressed that. So let's move on to agriculture and climate change. So that would speak to maybe having two, two of them sort of teed up. I don't think he would wade very far into agriculture. So no. as I look at the list, maybe the agriculture one could be could be next if number eight um, gets pretty much covered by by Bob and we don't need to follow it but if Bob doesn't then we can follow up with number eight and put number five next in line mm -hmm. yeah yeah and you know what um, you David you might even um ask Bob, um, you know, say, look, th these are the kind of top choices we have, um, you know, fr from your perspective, would it, would it make sense to, to do these two as separate conversations? Or do you think that in, in, a, in a conversation about the cost of action and inaction, you know, you'd, you'd kind of cover what the planet would look like in the future? Or is that something that we could explore in a whole um, additional conversation? Because he, he might have some insight about that. I think it's a great idea. Why don't, why don't we pick a third one then just in case he can do those two in one. I, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to get to have, uh, have you know, one, hold on a second, let me see what we got here. I, I wanna make sure we have at least two before, you know, two of the two short ones that aren't, you know, uh, that don't demand like, you know, going past one meeting actually. I wanna kind of, I want it to be the lighter ones, but then when we hit agriculture, I want that, since that may take more than one, I wanna make sure we've already got, you know, as I said, a built up of following on it. So um, maybe there's, so maybe we can pick another one that, you know, in case we can't, in case the, what the planet looks like in 20, 2050, 2100 is too, too short, uh, uh, you know, a one that someone can't just do you know, by itself, and so maybe we could have a, a different one that we can put in between. That's, that's not the climate, or that's not the agriculture, you're saying, because the agriculture is a little heavy? Yeah, I'm just trying to say that I, I want to have a, a few, few, a few shorter ones that we know are, you know, get a, a following in this, there, you know, where the subject is over in one night, for sure. Uh, and then when we hit the, 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 the third one, you know, when we hit, when, well, when we hit the, the agricultural and we may have to even go more than one to get it in where you know we've we've already got people that are you know that are coming to to listen to the presentations or, or you know getting online to listen to the presentation so um sure sure that's just I, you know just, just a thought i mean maybe maybe i'm all wet in that i don't know it's just, you know yeah no I, I like that idea and i think too you know with with the agriculture thing um you know what our experience with that has been is like we're just kind of it 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 it's overwhelming for us as, as a board. Um, and so we're still, we're still kind of trying to figure out the best way to go about it and break it down. So, um, you know, as we're doing these conversations um, that we don't, you know, that we kind of keep, keep that subject, keep kind of chewing away at that subject um, and figure out kind of um, where we want to go with it once we reach it. To that end, why don't we get, uh, you know, one or two of these speakers, you know, um, you know, uh, to come in and talk to us. Yeah, I like that. Um, so you're talking about the agriculture people? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Okay, yeah. Um, there were a couple of other names too that um, I came across recently um, in, a, in a forum discussion. I don't know in terms of their like status in, in this ecosystem if they're, you know, easier or, or more difficult to actually get a hold of, but I can look back on that. Um, I, like, I like the idea of getting a cattle farmer in there uh, and, and it could be either Robert Strickland or we could even get, um, who we didn't get, we can get uh, Lee uh, McSherry to come in because he's a, he, he's actually a, a, you know, a cattle farmer too. I did do that. And also then, um, and, and Jack Payne, who we shouldn't have too much trouble getting to come back and talk to us because we can always get a hold of PJ and PJ can, uh, you know, who knows Jack pretty well. I'm sure he, he wouldn't mind. Uh, just, yeah. just remember, just remember that Jack Payne is retired. He's no yeah. longer vice yeah. president. There's a new guy, Scott Angle, who is the, he's been here about a year, um, is the, is the vice president now. Okay. Do you think he would then, Jack wouldn't be as good, a, you know, to, it says here to talk about their perspective in the role of Florida agriculture in combating climate change. You didn't, you think well, that would no, be Jack, Jack could probably do an okay job. I'm just, I'm just, I, I just, I'm just throwing that out in, in case people, people are picking Jack Payne because they think he's the vice president. He, he, he no longer is. I was picking because he's just a pleasant guy, and I like him when he came and talked to us before. So, um, the current the current vice president is a fellow by the name of Scott Angle. Um, I, I'm not picking one or over the other. I'm just, okay. I'm just putting hey, we, that. We could have Scott Angle um, or try to reach out to him as well, because if nobody has much experience with him, it might be good to just get to know him. Yeah, that's true too. I mean, he's going to hopefully be around for a while in that position. Yeah. Well, I'll leave that decision to someone else. I have no idea, you know, which is the, the better in that case to go for. Um, I guess to some extent, you know, Jack may not be that available if he's retired. I mean, you know, it's he may be off in some, you know, foreign country. Who knows? People like to travel once they retire. Well, you also have more of a specialist in the in the science of things. You know, I mean, sometimes these these big top you know top administrators really don't have their hands on the, the details. They can speak in generalities, but um, perhaps somebody like you know number B, the synthol uh, Asang, you know, he's more on the front line, um, and he could surely speak to. The, um, the role that, that agriculture plays and the impacts of climate change on agriculture. Is that Florida Climate, Ch climate Institute different than Florida Climate Change Initiative? Or I guess, is that the, are they involved in the same group? This fellow, um, Sendold Asseng, um, he actually was one of the speakers in the forum that I was listening to earlier. The, um, Agriculture and Forestry in a Changing Climate, What the Future Holds for Florida. It was a forum from the, sorry, I'm looking at my thing, from the solutions. Uh, <laughs> sorry, I have a desktop monitor that's like, um, Solutions from the Land is the organization that was holding this forum. Um, and he was one of the speakers for that. So um, I can send everybody um, a link to that forum um, if you want to kind of hear him talk and get a sense of, of what his area of expertise is and kind of how he is as a presenter. Um, yeah. And then maybe we wanna reach out to him if, if everyone likes him. Well, let's, let's, let's get a couple of these people and just kind of decide up front, we can get them to come in. It doesn't really matter if we end up putting them on a panel or anything like later. It's just, you know, we're looking for people to give us some, you know, some, some ideas and, and some, you know, some knowledge and, and whatever they are capable of imparting to us. And I think that's, and we're, we're missing a lot of that because we're not having anyone come in and talk to us. So we're mm -hmm. totally, totally what we may, you know, e either know ourselves already or, you know, just people we know already or going online. I mean, yeah, I'd much rather be, you know, having someone come in that could give Yeah, us I mean, getting, getting anyone to come in and talk to us um, on these subjects that we want to learn more about is definitely better than not. Um, So, I mean, I can reach out to somebody. Um, 
or if anybody else wants to volunteer to do that. I'm doing Bob, so I'm, I'm fine with you doing one of these. Okay, okay. yeah, I'll, I'll reach out to a few of these people and see if I can get somebody to, to join us for our next um, converse or our next um, meeting. Regular meeting, yeah. Regular meeting, yeah. Um, so great, so, so we'll have potentially Bob or an alternate um, if he wants to come to the meeting um, and, and we can kind of um, see what he has in mind for his conversation um, and then somebody uh, in agriculture to kind of continue our education on that subject. Um, and then um, David, last thing that you wanted to, um, to do, which I think is, uh, makes a lot of sense is to slate up something else um, to have in mind for the next conversation. So nice. the, the next most popular after the future cost of inaction versus action and agriculture and climate change um, after all of those, the ones that received four votes were a day in your carbon footprint, um, and local efforts in climate change, and that's it. So those were the, the next most popular. You know, because Commissioner Alford is, is you know, um, bringing up the, you know, the idea of, of carbon and carbon trading and all that sort of stuff, you know, before the board. Um, I maybe we can go with that as well. I just, just kind of rung my bell in terms of something that might be interesting. Oh, I didn't realize she was she was discussing that. Yeah, I. I where did That's I say cool. That? She, she's presenting. She's presenting. You know, that, that doing we do something in that area. Anyway, I missed it. Mark, maybe you know. Pardon, what was the question again? Yeah, it was Mary. Mary, I saw something on a, on a, on something from the county recently. They talked about Mary, um, you know, and and carbon, you know, um, making a motion for carbon, you know, trading or something of that nature. Um, you know, was you you know what that was about? Um, it was more related to um, green infrastructure for public housing type projects. Um, and trying to work that into affordable housing issues that the city is trying to address. So I'd like to learn more about, you know, what, what people would talk about, you know, carbon trading, carbon, you know, um, whatever, plus this is carbon footprinting as well. So, I mean, but all those things, I'd like to see what they're, you know. Yeah, another carbon yeah. footprint, you know. Another yeah. thought, oh, go ahead. Go ahead, Nisha. <laughs> I was just gonna say, um, you know, th that kind of, um, gives me the idea, um, you know, we have these um, new commissioners who are in, already involved in, in projects and already have kind of um, initiatives that they want to get rolling, like Alf Alfred's, you know, um, you know, environmentally sustainable, um, affordable housing. And, and I know that uh, Prisia does a lot with like, um, you know, food and, and making sure that, you know, people have access to healthy food and that we're using sustainable practices and stuff. Um, so um, maybe we get a commissioner to come speak to us um, and kind of tell us about the things that they're interested in, and that could um, spur some some ideas for future conversations around things that um, you know might become might become bigger issues within the county commission. There were the county is also I I do like that idea. Um, I don't know how we fit it into just finding our next topic here though. So one of the things that someone that CCAC is is, is kind of focusing on um, is uh, as energy, you know. And I I think this carbon footprint also kind of fits into that. So maybe we can find something that's kind of a, you know uses both of those in, in terms of well the local the local efforts in climate change um, is a very broad subject. That we have on here, and that could include any any of those things. I I question whether the public at large is that familiar with with carbon footprints. Um, I'm not sure the public at large is, and whether that would just fall dead if it were a topic and only appeal to the people who already know about it. Yeah. So what else? What else is here that that, that is uh, uh, high on the high on the list? Um. So, so yeah. So the 
the carbon footprint and the um, local efforts in climate change were the um, the, the next most popular. Um, I mean, I, I feel like if we're being democratic, we, we do one of those. Um, what are the other two again, then? Uh, so the ones that got, so those two got four votes and then the, the other, um, the ones that got three votes were climate change and our oceans. Um, and the economist perspective on climate change, talking about carbon trading. What were the other fours again? Because the three is, is the, you know, is, is a little bit down there. I think. The other, the fours were local efforts in climate change and um, a day in your carbon footprint. Okay. I, actually kind of, I actually kind of like the day in the day in your carbon footprint. Um, you know, it's going back to what Bruce just uh, raised. Um, I, I actually kind of favor teaching people about uh, this week. You know, you don't have to call it carbon footprint. You can just say your your effect on the climate. And I, I think I think you can make a very very interesting talk out of that out of number three because I think there's a lot of things that people do that they don't even realize I'm sure that I have lots of things that I I do that I have no clue what I'm doing and 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 what their impacts are and I, I think that could be a really really interesting um, topic for the general populace professor I have a question do you do you think that's something you might be interested in presenting what'd you say <laughs> 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 Professor, <laughs> no, you know, it's something you find you you would have fun doing. I mean, I, you know, that's really what it comes down. Yeah. You know, now, I think you, I think you need to get a, I think you need to get somebody with some expertise. Um, okay. You know, Maybe I don't that. mind, I don't mind chiming in if if there's if it can be coordinated in such a way that, um, you know, maybe maybe somebody. You know, if the speaker were to present six or eight or ten uh, lifestyles that, and here's the impact, um, I don't mind being the goat to say, "Yeah, I'm guilty." Um, here's what I do. <laughs> so, maybe where, where, where do we find an expert on on, on carbon yeah. footprinting? I mean, you know, for me, it's like, oh, gee, I stepped on my pencil. You know, so yeah, that, that's that's about as far as I can go with it. So I don't know anybody really that's, you know, I, I don't know if anyone at the university has done research, you know, on that or anyone locally. And it's not, doesn't seem like that's the sort of thing in general that the, you know, the climate groups are looking at. What if we are. advertised it as, what is your carbon footprint? And then perhaps subtitle it, a day in your carbon footprint or something like that. But start off with a, what is your carbon footprint to explain it to people? Yeah, uh, the, like an introduction to what it even means to, yeah. you know, to say carbon footprint and then start talking about. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I like that because I, I, I feel like, yeah, a, a lot of people might, they might have heard the term or they might not even yeah. have heard the term, but they don't really know what that means to say right. that. Yeah, right. no, I like that too. Um, and as far as a, a speaker for that, I think that's something that we can all just kind of think about and yeah. come back to. Um, I, you know, it's it's almost seven o'clock. I want to keep this short um, so that people keep coming to the subcommittee meetings. Um, so, <laughs> um, so I feel like we're at a good place, um, you know, with with what we have lined up. Um, and can so, make, can we just make this 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 one the alternate second one then? And we just have to see if we can find who we can find to speak on this uh, intelligently. Sure. Okay. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, I'm happy with that. And so, um, David, you're reaching out to Bob, and then I'll um, try to find somebody that can come to our next meeting and, and talk about agriculture and climate change. Yep. And if, if anybody has any ideas in the meantime, you know, um, send them to me through Mark, or you can, yeah, reach out. Can I introduce an, a little factoid? Of course. Yes. Yeah. Um, I just happened to read a paper or st I started reading a paper on the effect of plastic uh, one use on the increased acidification of the oceans by virtue of throwing, uh, harmful bacteria. And um, I, I've just started looking at this paper, but I, th I might've mentioned it last time at, um, at our meeting but it's just these little things keep on pulling me in interesting directions. 
I mean, plastic and who would have thought plastic bottles would favor uh, certain species of bacteria attaching to them, which bring about uh, greater uh, speed in the acidification of the oceans. Interesting. I would never have imagined it. Yeah. I, I wasn't aware that that was a big deal either. So I thought it was all from carbon and carbon mixing in the water, making it bicarbonate. Apparently there's bicarbonate, so, you know, so many chemical reactions that you can't, people can't imagine all this stuff. Wow. Yeah, I read, I read an article recently about, uh, it's called trolling, where they like take the big nets and kind of go across the bottom of the ocean. Oh, yeah. And they they did a study. I think it was just published in Nature or something about the carbon impact of that. And it's it's much bigger than they had previously thought. It's like more than um, than like all of the air air travel in a year in terms of the carbon emission from that. From from disturbing benthic uh, materials, the bottom the ocean bottom stuff. Yeah yeah yeah. yeah. Just for your information, I, I asked Mark to send this um, link to y'all. There's um, in the Office of Sustainability at the University of Florida, there's a calculator for your, your commute carbon footprint, commute carbon footprint calculator. Oh. So oh, cool. I'm willing to bet that there's somebody somewhere that knows how to, knows how to do this for, for a lot of the aspects of daily life. It's just a matter of finding finding the right person. That could be, nice, be a nice homework project too after the you know after the presentation to be able to say here's what you need to do or go to this site, you know, and it, you can you can calculate, you know, your carbon. Yeah, footprint. I'm sure I, I, I imagine David if you if you look for these carbon footprint calculators, I'll bet you you can find find them all over the place. They may not cover everything that you know that each person does, but uh, it would be interesting to uh, have somebody who knows about this bring yeah. it all together for us. Yeah, It'd be very good to have somebody who's a, a quick and top-notch person who could give an explanation and then ask people in the audience, "Okay, now what do you do?" And I'll calculate your footprint right now. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what what we could do there is pass out a piece of paper that has certain questions on it you need to ask. Ask those questions and then. You know, while the while the present presenter is giving the presentation, run the calculation, and then you know we can give back people the answer to theirs without displaying it to the public. I mean, but you know we can mm. give the range you know that we had from you know people without giving their names. It might be interesting to do. Yeah. Before we go, I have one thing I'd like to say about Cuscoilla. Um, you know the the Camp McConnell new place. This Friday. The Friends of Cuscoelo is having its monthly meeting, but also this Friday, the county is interviewing for a manager for Cuscoelo to get the season started. So it's it's progressing, which is wonderful to see. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Awesome, thank you, Bruce. That's great. Okay, it's, everyone. One, one thank you, and thank you, Mark. <laughs> if Scott Knight were here, would he have been the the one person to object to carbon, uh, what are the terms, carbon credits? Oh, the, the carbon trading? Yeah, yeah, I, I could see him saying, and maybe rightfully so, that it's it could be viewed as just a, a sham way to avoid doing what really needs to be done. Uh, I can I can see him saying yeah. that too, but I also think that he was the one who brought that topic up. Who was this? Oh. Well, yeah. <laughs> what are you talking about? He might I, say that it's something. I've I, I actually had some involvement in carbon trading myself. I'm um, looking at um, when I was in previous position, we were looking to plant pine trees in a preserve and offsetting carbon emissions that were ironically associated with the Super Bowl in Tampa. And it was like, you know, but then I started looking at, you know, we were looking at, and we sold credits to a, a carbon trading company based out of California. And, you know, it, 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 the thought process is like, well, how does this apply from less carbon worldwide? You know, and, and it, it it's it's a I I don't know what the word voodoo means. Well, it's it's a lot of funny like you know and 
And now the big one that's come up uh, more recently is blue carp. And, you know, trying to, and, and, you know, looking at trying to capture credit within rising sea levels that are rehydrating or hydrating areas that just maybe historically or not, not historically wetland like saltwater marshes around. And it's like, so you're gonna give credit for something that climate change is like producing. And it's like, but what you're saying is that man has actually by right, you know, increasing carbon to where it's like flooding areas. And now you're gonna try to capture credit for that. And it's like, really? I mean, is that, you know, yeah. it's like, you know, where, where is like, you know, the, the, the basis of that. And so it's kind of interesting. Yeah. There are companies that, that, that deal with carbon trading and there are, um, it get, there's a lot of money at stake, let's put it that way. And it's a way to do a, I hate the word to use the word pay and go, but for some big companies and industries to say, rather than doing their cleanup, to just send a check right. to some, you know, yeah, whether it's a public agency, private, whoever, to plant trees and saying, well, that, calls, that solves our problem. But those planted trees may be in like Australia for, a, a, you know, a, you know, something that's going on in, in Europe or, you know, the, the United States or whatever. So it's, it's kind of, it's, it's interesting in theory and, and you hope, but in practical matters, it, it would be interesting. I imagine there's been some studies to see how re reality affects. I'm sure it assuages guilt. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't take care of, take care of a problem somewhere else and then, you know, destroy a given ecosystem. That doesn't help the yeah. ecosystem, you know. But, and it, and it brings up because, you know, just as y'all know, the last few years, there's been an incredible increase in rainforest um, degradation, burning, you know, like, three acres a minute down in. And it's like, well, how are you going to offset that? I mean, it's going at a much faster rate than you could possibly plant anywhere else in the world. And so, um, yeah, it's, it's where, where are you going to go with this? So I don't know. It, it's, I appreciate David bringing that up as a topic. And it's one of those, it's like the kind of like the elephant in the room. It's like, it looks good on paper that you're, you know, trying to do something to offset, but I, I, I fear that people looking behind the curtain would see like, you know, I don't know about that. You know, it's, it's look, if it looks too good to be true. Yeah, then we need to reveal yeah. that, you know? Right. That's, yeah, that's yeah. the point. Yeah. Excellent. Okay, um, anything else? All right. Well, um, it was it was really nice catching up with everybody. Yeah. And uh, well, we'll see everyone in a couple, couple weeks. weeks. Bye bye. 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 I'm sorry, bye. I was bye. late. My corned beef and cabbage wasn't quite ready. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. We knew what your priorities are. Dinner time. <laughs> I had a, I had a good dinner. <laughs> Very good. <laughs> bye bye. Night. Good night.